call this message today, Stand Still and See the Salvation. This is going to be part one because we're going to be here a while. <laughs> now, I told you a couple of weeks ago we started on the kingdom of priests, which we still are, mainly focusing that on wisdom. Believe it or not, that's what we got right there on the kingdom of priests. And we, we just got a lot, lot to go. I'm going to tell you what, guys. I don't know about you, but I have been... Uh, we started going back in 1979, going to what we call going to church. And I've heard a lot of sermons, so-called, a lot of sermons. But what the Lord has been revealing of himself, of his son here in the last little bit, has just about washed all that away. Just and almost to the fact to where you can't hardly even talk to other people because you realize that even the very questions they have are I, I don't I don't even know irrelevant. I heard somebody say this the other day and I thought, my God, this is this is true. Let me just talk on this a second. The scripture says the Jews seek a sign. Now I've heard this phrase before, and it's really true when I would say the Jew is you. Because what we're talking about is your religious mindset. And you know what, guys? We all got one. We all have got idols in our mind and in our heart because we ought to say, well, it ought to be this way. That's an idol. It ought to be this way. We ought to do this. We ought to do that. The Jews seek a sign. How many times have you prayed, Lord, if it's really you, See, that's the religious part of you. I mean, and here you go. I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there, guys. You take it for what it's worth. Have you ever been praying and asking the Lord and maybe a big thunderstorm is rolling through and a big cloud of thunder hits? Boom! <laughs> There's your sign. I mean, it really happens. You're thinking, well, the Lord caused it to thunder at that particular time. There's my sign. See, that's just the religious part of you. You're seeking a sign. Well, I ain't religious. Well, you either go follow one or two categories, because then the Greeks are seeking wisdom. You know? And how many times of that do they want wisdom? Now, the Greeks have invaded the church. I'm talking right now. What do you mean the Greeks have invaded the church? How many questions you get thrown out there at you that's that you remember... Uh, Paul or Peter, one of them talked about uh, vain babblings and, and, and endless genealogies and things like that. Let me, let me give you an example of that. And they got uh, TV shows on the creation, right? Why God exists. You guys heard these things and, you know, We'll go into this and Big Bang theories and string theories and all this other stuff. You know what that is? Those are Greek foolish questions that just don't even relegate a response or an answer. Uh, you know, so many times the Greek part, people will pose these questions. Well, can you have these people in your church? Can you do this in your church? We get by, we do this, we do that, we do that. You know what I'm talking about? The Greeks have invaded the church. You know what Paul said? Paul said, you got all that stuff right there, but let me, you don't know the one. You got him over here in the corner. It's called the unknown God. Yeah. Him, I want to declare to you, yeah. that's the one I'm bringing today, the unknown God. Yes, yes. Now, now that's hard, and I'm going to tell you what, guys, we're going to hit on a couple things today that's either going to leave you scratching your head, thinking I'm plumb crazy, which hopefully already does, <laughs> or it's going to be a wow moment. For me, I have just been on this for two weeks and, and trying to even pose how to bring this about. I got a whole lot of notes here, and that's like, wow, to me, because it... On one hand, it's devastating. On the other hand, it's exalting. 
Well, I said, stand still and see. We're going to look at this. And we talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, I don't know, about purpose. Purpose. My God, isn't that every one of us is question? Why am I here? What purpose am I supposed to do? God, what's your purpose for me? Boy, if I only knew. We're going to look. And I'm going to tell you where we're going to start out. We've been here before, but we're going to look at it with a, a little different view. But we're going to go to Ephesians. And we're going to look at Ephesians for the eternal purpose of God. And I'm going to tell you what it's laid out in Ephesians 1, uh, verses 1 through 14. But let's, let's start at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just listen real careful of here. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Amen. Blessed. We can stop right there. We don't need to go any farther. Most do. Man, we're already blessed. It's good. Amen. Let's keep reading here. With all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places in Christ. I want you to just I want just want you to get, get a hold of this. We're praying for something that you already got. Listen to what I'm telling you. How many blessings are you already blessed with? All. All means every single one of them. Or as we used to say in the Marine Corps, ever stinking one of them. You know what I'm talking about? I have to throw that in there because I want you to get the emphatic all. But it's in a location. It's in Christ. You know, this is something that's rolled through my mind here real quick because I, I always like to bring it down where I can understand it. You know, I bank with BB&T. It's my bank like it's my bank. I bank with them. But anyway, so if I go to a new people's bank, I can't withdraw any money unless I got a gun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because my blessings, my money ain't in that bank. You see what I mean? It's in the other bank. So all your blessings are in Christ. Yes. You're not going to find them outside of Christ anywhere else. Nowhere else are you going to find them. Nowhere. But remember what I, what I want to bring before you today is purpose. All these blessings, spiritual blessings, are in accordance with something. But, but I, want you to, I want you to think about it. Just think about this. All these spiritual blessings speak of a salvation. Man, ain't that a Greek question? Are you saved? What the heck does that mean? I mean, has, it, has the Lord ever even brought that out to you? Are you saved? What does that mean to you? Does that just mean you're going to heaven someday? I mean, really, what does that mean to you? Has the Lord really challenged you on that down in your heart? Salvation. Because that's what we're talking about right here. Salvation. How many know <clears throat> Listen. Salvation has become pathetic in the Christian world. Absolutely pathetic. Because all it is is some little ticket to Dollywood. That's all salvation is to most people. And I say Dollywood because that's heaven to most people. Because we're going to go over there and have fun all the time. Got my ticket. Salvation. I'm going to tell you what, guys. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Full salvation. How many of you even know anything about full salvation? I'm going to tell you what. These guys waited for 2,000 years on the man to show up. And you know what he said? I'm here. John saw him said, Behold the Lamb of God. He 
it, but he came to his own, and his own received him not. You know, that's still us today. Don't even know squat about the one of full salvation, or per, the, the, the man of full, we know so little. That's what I'm talking about. We know so little. But I'm talking about an all, an all salvation, a full, complete salvation. Guys, let me tell you something. Look, let me ask you a question. If you knew for a fact the Apostle Paul was going to be here today, would you have told all your buddies and your pals and everything and said, you, would you believe this? Apostle Paul is reincarnated and he's he's up there at Rhythms of Grace right across from the college and, and they're going to have a healing service and, and all, I mean, what, would you have acted any different? Say so. These guys believe in reincarnation. I mean, Jesus had to ask him the question, who do men say that I am? I mean, some say you're Jeremiah. Jeremiah had been dead for 500 years. Some say you're Elijah. You see what I'm talking about? I mean, they believe that they was just coming back and coming back. But who do you say that I am? Paul talks about this salvation, guys, in all of his epistles. Full, complete salvation. But this salvation, this all spiritual blessings is according to something. What's it according to? Now, here's why I got to challenge you. Paul, I told you, speaks about this salvation all of his epistles. He centers this salvation in Christ himself, just like he did right here. But it's according to some Salvation is not according to the creation of the universe. It's not according to the creation of the world. It's not according to the creation of man. It's not according to the fall of man. It's not according to the garden of Eden. How do I know this? I mean, do you ever stop? The Lord ever challenge you on that, this, this salvation? What it's according to? Because what does the very next verse say? He, I mean, he did something in accordance with. And according as he hath chosen us in him. When? Before the foundation of the world. You see, the salvation that we're talking about, all spiritual blessings, is before the creation of the universe. Before the creation of the world, before the creation of man, before the creation of, of anything. Now I want you to get this time frame down because like I said I'm going to challenge you. I want you to see this timeline before there was sin, before there was a man to sin. Before the fall. Now let me, i got to challenge you right here too. What the heck is the fall? Everybody knows about the fall comes into church, right? Oh, yeah, man, man fell. What does that mean? I mean, do you ever stop and think about these things? What did man fall from? Did he fall out of the presence of God? Was he in some elevated position and fell from that? Because that's what most people's thinking of that is, right? He was in this position, he fell from it, and God is bringing us back, restoring us into that position. That's not it. Adam was made a living soul. Adam was of the earth, earthy. Let me say it this way. What Adam fell from was he fell short of his intended purpose. Okay? He didn't fall from a position. We got to understand that. It's very critical. He didn't, he wasn't up here and he fell off and God had to set him back up. He was, it's, it's more like running a race and there's the finish line and he fell short of that. It's very critical because what I'm telling you is a better salvation. It's a better uh, of anything that Adam ever had. You don't want to walk with God. Now that just sounded strange, didn't it? Because God is in Christ in you, made one. It's different. Adam had visitation. 
Now the body of Christ has habitation. It's different. Yeah. It's different, guys. It's different. Adam fell short. That was what he fell short. He fell short of what God intended. And what now God has perfected it all in Christ and presented it to those who will know him, to as many as received him. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So listen to this. So if we apply all these terms to salvation, what, what terms? Uh, reconciliation, restoration, consecration, sanctification, redemption. We apply all these terms to salvation. Where do we have to go with it? Now remember this timeline. If we apply it to this timeline, we got to go before the foundation of the world. Now, this is very important, guys. I know this may sound boring. I watched a little TV this morning. I listened to a little radio, and I see how, how everybody's out there trying to pump you people up and all this other thing. And, you know, it's like a leaky tire. You know, Jeremiah said, uh, I believe it was Jeremiah said, Adam, he said, you people are a broken sister. You can't hold water. Like your leaky tire, we can pump you up, pump you up again, pump you up again, pump you up again. You're just going to keep leaking. That's why we got to come to the cross. Because, but see, now it's about presenting Christ. That's what it's about, just presenting Christ. Remember these terms, salvation or redemption, reconciliation, all these things apply to salvation. Now, if they're going to do that, you can't stop with creation. Because remember, this was in according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before the foundation of the world. So we find that salvation finds its purpose. A purpose that was in the heart of God, remember, because it was according to So we find out this salvation, this purpose in the heart of God was before the foundation of the world. You know, you know what my mind would say to that sometimes? Who cares? Because you know what it was to jump up to me and says, what's in it for me? What do I get out of this? Well, I mean, really, what's in it for me? Come on, guys, I'm going through a bunch of junk. Who cares about before the foundation of the world? Who cares about any of this stuff? God, I, you know. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about? Sometimes I get so looking into this stuff and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, guys. We're gonna, if we ever get us a sign We'll put on that sign, and you watch that Jesus Christ will be here Sunday at 11. Yeah. I'm just going to see if people show up. Because <laughs> there'll be a whole lot of people come up here thinking it's funny, right? I mean, truthful. I'm going to put on the sign Jesus Christ will be here at, 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 at 6 30 on Wednesday night. If you want to see him, come here. I wonder what people think about that. Man, that dude's crazy. Crazy and arrogant, right? Yeah. Crazy and arrogant, thinking that Jesus is going to come up. But, guys, i got to tell you something. i gotta, I got to challenge you. Why did you come here today? Because if you came here to see or hear me, let's go to the house right now. Because you're wasting your time. Because I ain't got nothing to say. But when the body gathers out, we gather out for one reason, not to hear a sermon, not to hear nothing, but to see him. Just like a pregnant woman. You know what we used to say when a woman was pregnant? She is expecting. That's what we got to come here for, expecting. That is hope. Christ in you, the expectation. And he said, where two or three are gathered out in that expectation, 
heaven, there will I be. You see, you see the difference is, if you came here in the expectation to get pumped up, no Christ. Do you see what I'm talking about? And then I can go back and pump you up and go back and pump you up and do all these. But if we come here to see Him, and I'm going to tell you what, guys, when you see Him, when you begin to see Him, I'm not talking with these natural eyes, in your heart, in your soul, I'm telling you what, you will be, oh, I don't even have words to just tell you what it will do to you. I mean, it gets beyond words. I just think Paul, you know, <coughs> you know, seal up the problem. You don't got to seal up nothing. You don't have a vocabulary. It's outside of your vocabulary. Yeah. Salvation was according before the foundation of the world. So the fact is, listen to this. Though the world was created for the purpose of God, listen to this. The world was created for the purpose of God, but the purpose of God is not found in the world. Man was created for the purpose of God, but the purpose of God is not found or realized in man. Why? Because I just told you this was before the foundation of the world. I know you're thinking, this is crazy stuff. But yet man has a purpose. Why? Because purpose exists, existed before any of us ever even existed. Look at verse 5. Having predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Good pleasure of his will. Now look at verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Now guys, I, I know you're thinking, well this is all crazy jumbo, jumbo stuff. Come on, just tell me what my purpose is. You tell what we want to know? God, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll go do it. Same thing Patty was talking about right here earlier, guys, because we want to jump up in our religious mind and go do something for the Lord because we're looking for purpose. Lord, look at me. i got a great big church. i got, I got all this. i got, I'm doing all these things for God. This is my purpose. This is my, I have found my purpose in life. <clears throat> have you ever thought that? Come on. Just be real. Have you ever thought you found your purpose? Only to find yourself just like Adam? What? falling short. You find your purpose, you go out there and you do it for a little while and then, then, then what happens? Adam, you fall short. Come on. Then what happens? Condemnation. Then, then what do we do? The mind plays tricks. Maybe that wasn't my purpose. Maybe I got out there in front of God. Maybe this is my purpose. Maybe that was my purpose for a little while. Now I've got my another purpose. See, this is very important. Because what I'm, you know, he said, uh, my peace, I leave with you. You know, let me tell you, all God gives is the fullness of Christ. Do y'all believe that? I want you to think about this. We, we out here praying. We're out here praying. Let's say you all $189 on, on elected bill. We're playing for $189. Maybe 200. Now these things sound crazy, but guys, I want you to understand what I'm talking about here. How many blessings are we talking about in this full salvation? All spiritual blessings. We're praying for $189. You see, we're looking for provision. I'm going to tell you something about provision here in a minute. that's a mentality guys that is a stinking mentality that's came in now you know what kind of measure you live out of I'm just going to tell you this plain and simple you live out of your comprehension what you understand is the way you live so if you have no understanding of Christ you're going down here to New People's Bank trying to get out some money and there ain't nothing in there for you to get. 
I read to you, verse 9, had made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. To everything of God in Christ, there is a purpose that is directly connected with the counsel of his own heart for the good pleasure of his own will. You know what it's saying, guys? There's something God desired in his heart before the foundation of the world. I don't even have words to get this out here, guys. I want you to understand. God had a desire that was before there was ever even a man or, or a, a garden or anything. God had and he done everything according to that purpose. Everything else is according to that purpose. The universe exists for that purpose. And, but yet the purpose is not found in the universe. That sounds like semantics, don't it? I, I want to this purpose, guys, I want to confront you with this purpose. Because we come to that purpose in the face of Jesus Christ. We don't come here simply by hearing about Him. We come there by seeing Him. Now, I said in the face of Jesus Christ. Guys, how many times, how many times has people in a church world or religious setting said, guys, you got to have faith for that? Right? Got to have faith for that. Got to have faith. Got to believe. Got to have faith. Got to have faith. I'm going to ask you a question, guys. And we've been over this and over this and over this and over this, especially on our, on our Wednesday nights. What the heck is faith? You ever wonder? Because, I, you know, Jesus asked him, or told him, guys, not such faith in all Israel have I seen. What the heck is faith? I mean, do you, I mean, do you ever just bring these things right to the Lord? And, and you know, we walk by faith, we do this, we, we do all this, and the Lord said, have faith, and you think, well, Lord, if I knew what faith was, I'd get a whole buggy. I ain't got a clue what faith is. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith is made perfect in seeing. So let me tell you what all this comes out to be. Faith is walking in your comprehension, in your understanding of God, of Christ. So if you have no understanding... You walk in no faith. Do, do you see what I'm, how vital this is? Hmm. Faith. Faith is a realization given of God. How? By the revealing of His Son. Would it please God to reveal His Son in me? And many of us fall short just like Adam we fall short, and what happens when we fall short? Guys, we make an idol. We stop right there and we start worshiping it. I'm telling you guys, we all do that. Well, let's, let's just stay right here on this purpose. Let's concern ourselves with this purpose. What, I mean, what is the purpose of it? And, and guys, we find a reason for doing whatever it is we do. This may sound boring to you, but don't. I mean, everything we do, we got a reason for it. We got a purpose for it. And we think a bit of mind. Why are you doing that? I'm doing this because I'm doing this for this purpose. So we're looking for purpose in every single thing we do. You know. I, I just look back and I and I think, man, 
I'm, I'm out here doing this and then I come back into the church and now I found my purpose and God wants me to be a preacher and I'm driving all these miles and doing all these things trying to find this purpose and I found this purpose and he wants me to go do this and I go do this and I'm down here doing this and I'm finding purpose and I'm feeling real good and then but as soon as something happens what happens I find myself in my closet crying my eyes out because nothing worked that way and I'm rejected and I'm up to creek. You know, two weeks ago I'm in the purpose of God and all things is good. Now they don't want me anymore and I'm out of the purpose of God. Did I do something wrong? You see what I mean? You end up just banging your head against the wall. God, does God want me over here in this church? Come on, guys. Have you ever thought that? Does God want me in this church? Does God want me over here? Does God want me over here? God, if you would just tell me... And God, I know I can't hear you up here, but you know, you could send me a letter or something that says, listen, <laughs> real simple. I want you to go, and that's what we think. God, if you could just make it simple and tell me what my part, tell me where to go, and I will go. So then we have prayer benches. Pray for me because I don't know what, you know, I want. Come on, guys. Am I the only one that's ever been there? <laughs> Should I leave this church? Should I go to this one? Should I do this? Should I do this? Am I the only one that's fought them battles? Months? Years on end? So you just walk in and drag it. Oh, Lord. And you're, you're listening for a sign. Remember I told you the Jews seek a sign. And ain't that what we're doing? God, if you would just give me a sign. You know why, guys? Because we're looking for purpose. This purpose that was created before the foundation of the world, we're looking for it, trying to find it in other places. That's why we don't have any peace. You see, I'm trying to bring peace into your life. So then, it will not matter if you go here or you go there because you're walking in that purpose. You see what I'm trying to bring for you? We're trying to do something to find purpose, and you're never going to find purpose in anything you do. Never. By God, somebody could have saved me 35 years of hell if they would have told me that. Really. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to find purpose in everything I do, and it ain't there. I hope I'm making a little bit of sense to you. Just a little bit. <clears throat> oh. We've got to know where purpose can be found because remember this purpose, this eternal purpose was before the foundation of God. Why, If it was before the foundation of God, why would I think it's in preaching? Do you think preaching was before the foundation? Come on. First preacher I read about was Noah. That was a long ways, you know, after the creation. I want to relate this purpose to you because it, listen, it's so related to your and your relationship with Christ now and how you relate to each other now. This purpose is coming to find purpose, having our souls settled. My God, can you un listen to what I'm telling you? Your souls settled. You mean to tell me we don't have to worry anymore? I just got I just got some questions for you. If you guys are astute, you know, I think of Jesus. Well, you think, well, that's Jesus. What about Paul? You know what they told Paul? They said, I mean, just think about it. If I said this, I said, Jeff, you know, this is before you come, come here, and I'm going to say, if you go down there to that Rhythms of Grace Church, they're going to cut your head off. Really, they got a chainsaw revved up down there, they're going to cut your head off. You know what Jeff's saying? I ain't going out of that place. You know what Paul said? Who cares? I mean, think about what Paul said. Who cares? What's that to me? For to me, to live is Christ. You know, you know what they did? I mean, this really, really happened. They walked James and Peter up one morning and, and flipped a coin and James lost. James got his head cut off. Oh, yeah, cut his head off. And they said, Peter, we're going to get you tomorrow. You know what Peter did? Who cares? He laid back and went to sleep. Angel had to come in there and about pull his toe off to get him awake. 
Now, can you sleep in that condition? Guys, I'm just telling you, we will stay awake for three weeks at a time wondering what church to go to. I mean, I'm not even telling you the truth. They were going to cut this man's head off. He found something. I'm trying to bring peace into your life because you live in a chaos. We all live in a chaotic world where we're one phone call away from major grief. You don't, you don't think so? All, all this guy do is he give you one little phone call and say, you know what? Your mom was just in a bad car, man. She's dead. Boom. Everything's changed. Oh, man, your kids and just got in a bad car. Man. Right? I mean, you're a phone call away from a catastrophe. It's very important to me. Very important to me. As Adam falls short, I want this settled. I want to be settled in purpose, coming to find purpose. Having our souls settled in purpose. Determining in our hearts not to come short as Adam did. You know why we got these scriptures? They're for our admonition, for our learning, so that we don't make the same mistakes that they did. I don't know, guys. I don't know how old everybody is in here. But do you ever get frustrated raising teenagers? Because they don't pay attention. <laughs> and, and listen, because you've made the mistake and you tell them don't and they do it again, what I mean, what is your take on this thing? I remember one time with old Zach, we was over at Tracy, I'll just throw this out there, and they were and I told them, settle down, don't be jumping and hooting and hollering, because he don't like to wear shoes and socks. He's got these big old feet, and he's running around jumping to play. Well, you know what he does? He catches it on the back of the dresser, and he filleted the back part of the heel. Boom, pulled all the hide off of it. So there he is, screaming. You know what I said? I told you <laughs> not to jump. Is that a dad's answer? I told you not to jump, so don't come crying to me. Well, Tracy runs over and pets on it, but I say, all right. See, for this Bible was written for our admonition so we don't stump our toes and break our arms and fall short. So every time we fall short, guys, there's something written in here, Paul said, so that we don't find ourselves in that mess if we will follow these instructions. What happens is we come here, we hear something, we feel good in our heart, and we leave here, and it goes right out with the draught. You know what that means, don't you? Dad used to say it goes in one ear, right out the other. You wouldn't laugh. Yeah. I mean, you, you see, guys, this is written here. Thousands of years, God brought this, these scriptures. And, and you, do you realize, just in the, say, 1400s, nobody had a Bible? Nobody could get one. Now we got one. You can buy them in a grocery store. Yeah. Every motel you go to, you got them in the doctor's office. You got Bibles everywhere, and people pay no attention to it. All they want to do is jump over and look for end time junk and look over there in the book of Revelation. Oh, yeah, man, it's about the end of time. And oh, oh God, yeah, oh, Lord, let's get all worried. And did not Jesus say, my peace, I will leave it with you? What do you want above all else? Have y'all ever been around anybody, you know, who just seems like they never work? It almost ticked y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying it's like man nothing can shake them guys I'm telling you what all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus it's available now according to our comprehension are we walking in it I want us to walk in that I want us to be laid up in the boat, tossing and turning, and, and, the, and the world busting apart, and people have to come wake somebody up and say, Elaine, ain't you worried about this? Worried about what? 
It's no biggie to me. You see? That ain't been my case, guys. I don't know about you, I've had my gallbladder took out and I've worried and worried and cried and worried and done all these other things. Now I've come to the point it means something to me. I've been, I've been in such places and, and such things going on when the phone would ring, I would cringe. Have you ever been there? I hate it. So what, if, so what do we do with that? We still ain't living in no peace. Still ain't living in peace. Well, if I had all this money and I could do all this, Ask Robin Williams what he thought about all this money and all this other stuff. He was looking for peace and couldn't find it. We call it being tormented. Jesus come up on a man who was tormented, bound up in chains, living in the tombs. Guys, I'm going to tell you what. Most of the Christian people live among the dead. Live in the tombs, scared, bound up in fetters. And God help you if we cut you loose a little bit, I'm going to keep a leash on you. I don't want you to get too far out there. So, that, so we bring this thing around. Now listen, I don't want us to fall short of our quest for Jesus. I don't want us to fall short in our quest for faith. To not stop short of purpose. To not stop short of the glory of God in our walk. It's like I told you, we don't try to find purpose where it doesn't exist. Since everything was created according to purpose, there are many things that look like it should be the purpose. It isn't the purpose. It was created according to the purpose. But guys, and this goes back. Again, I'll ask that question. What is God's purpose for me? Let, me? let me give you a warning. Let's not reduce the purpose of God which was created before the foundation of the world and we try to shrink it down to me. Do you see what I'm talking about? See, this was never really exposed to me before because I didn't care. I just wanted to know what the purpose was for me. I didn't care about nothing else. You're trying to take the eternal purpose of God, reduce it down for me. You can't reduce God's purpose to you. We, listen to this, we are lifted up into the purpose of God. You see, this is what we don't like as Christians. We want everything to come to us instead of raised to walk in the newness of life. Let me tell you this. It's above, the purpose of God is above your needs. It's above what I'm going to do tomorrow. It's above what sermon I'm going to preach Although it determines that, but you can't find it there. You find purpose in one place. Remember this, in the face of Jesus Christ. And then, once you find that purpose, you manifest it everywhere. Do you see the difference? You do all things according to that purpose. And until you find that purpose, you do nothing according. Listen, if you're trying to, listen to what I'm telling you. When you, you find purpose in the face of Jesus Christ, and then you do all things according to that purpose, if you don't see the face of Jesus Christ, you do nothing in accordance with purpose. I just told you some great big stuff right there. <clears throat> purpose. Everything we do trying to find purpose, what does it lead to? Confusion. We're always in doubt. <clears throat> Where do I go? What do I do? When? Why? Where? What? 
Let's just look at this. Let me let me go over here to First uh, Kings. I want to give you a couple scriptures. First Kings five five. And behold, I purpose to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set upon the throne in my room, he shall build a house unto my name. You know what it, you know what it just said? Right? The purpose to build God a house was in the heart of David, but it was realized in the son. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah 14, 24. <laughs> Just giving you a couple of these purpose scriptures. Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Now when did he purpose? Before the foundation of the world. Now, now I got I got to tell you something here. I want to talk to you about two Israels here real quick. What do you mean two Israels? Thought there's only one Israel. Oh no, there was two Israels. Two Israels. In type and shadow, okay. There was an Israel that died in the wilderness. I got that up there on the board. All of them died in the wilderness. Then there was an Israel that passed over Jordan. <coughs> Two Israels. One, you ain't gonna like this, but I'm gonna tell you. One had faith for provision. But they failed to enter or to comprehend purpose. What do you mean? Manna fell on the ground every day. They died in their provision. Think about what I just told you. They died in their provision. They had manna. They had blessings. They didn't die of exposure. They did, but they all fell short. They died falling short of purpose. Died in their provision. And I'm going to tell you what, God connected that purpose immediately with glory. We all want glory, but what, I mean, what is it? We say with this glory, guys, one of these days, that's an easy cop-out fix for the religious world. So I don't have to teach you nothing, I don't have to show you nothing, we don't have to read our Bibles, we'll just come out here, glory, 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 hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Let's get out here, one of these days it'll be perfect. One of these days I'm going to get a brand new body. One of these days... Poppycock one of these days. Was that Paul's message one of these days? Today is the day of salvation. Full salvation. If you can hear it. I mean, what happened with these guys when they go over into the land? They send spies over into the land. They come back out. And what did they say? We can't go in. Too much for us. Man, ain't that a common term you'll hear today? Too much for us. We can't go into that land, guys. But, I mean, people say, well, that was Old Testament. They should have just went up there and went into the land. People will tell you the same thing today because here's what they tell you. You ain't never going to have peace today. You're never going to have peace in your life. You are never going to live healthy. It's always going to be something. <laughs> I, I just remember reading that one time. God, I just throw this stuff out there because I get aggravated at it sometimes. I can just remember one time when Jesus was going up to Capernaum to preach, but before they could go, everybody had to go get a flu shot. Do I mean, do y'all... Uh, I just got to throw that in there to see if you're paying attention. Do you think that's what they did, guys? No. I mean, come on. There's a virus going around. See, I'm going to bring this home to you. 
and bring us right in and just tell you guys, all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus are right there and we don't walk and squat because all somebody's got to do is mention, oh, that pukey diarrhea virus is going around. Stay away from me. I don't want to be around it. <laughs> That's what Jesus said too. Well, don't bring that guy over here. I don't want to catch that. I mean, come on, guys. This has got to be real. Real. The reality. We are walking in relationship with Christ Jesus. Christ is in you. What do we comprehend of that? What does it mean to us? Absolutely nothing. Squat. It means something we go do for a couple hours on Sunday. Wednesday if we get time. Other than that, heck, the realest thing there is to me. I'm going to tell you what. God came into my life, devastated me, tore me upside down. Now I realize why Paul said, not I, but Christ. He tore everything up. Took all my friends, took everything away. Can't even talk to anybody anymore except y'all not pay y'all to sit here. <laughs> Devastating, guys. Devastating. I've seen the, I've seen the man ride on the white horse. King of kings, Lord of lords. I'm going to tell you, I used to preach that very message. I told Patty out there. King of kings, man, he's the big king and we're all little kings. Baloney. Yeah. It means he's the king with a sword and he's cutting the head off all the other kings. Yeah. Right in your soul. Yeah. There's only room for one king in this kingdom and, and he is it. Yeah. Now this sounds devastating because we've been talked and pumped and set in the middle, set on our own throne for so long and it's devastating when we get kicked off. But I'm telling you what, guys, if you will get a glimpse, when you realize in your heart that I've been going to doctors, I've spent all my money, and I'm none the better. I'm still, I'm in worse shape than I was. What do you mean, guys? I'm going to tell you what. I was drinking. I was doing everything I could. And let me tell you something. I came into the church. He said, man, look at that. The prodigal son has come home. I was worse. My drinking buddies didn't throw me under the bus. I have been hurt by the church people ten times more than I have ever been hurt with any of my secular friends. My secular friends never lied on me, Jeff. Never, ever, ever lied on me. And if they had a beer, I had one. But you go to the church. Mm, 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 mm. These people will gut you from throat to backside. Not even think twice. Leave you on the side of the road and say, look at this. I'm just telling you. That's what this woman was. But she said... I heard about this man named Jesus. And I don't care. I am going to grab a hold of him. That's the people I want to talk to. The ones who ain't got nothing else. Been gutted, left on the side of the road. When they just say, I just want to reach up through and grab a hold of him. Hmm. This glory glory. Look at Numbers 14 21. Here's what he says. He says, oh, you're going to die. You won't come into this land. Listen, I've been blessing you provision every day. Man, I'm falling on the ground. Been blessing you. But all of y'all are going to die. As surely as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. What he said right there is all this land Israel that's marked out for Israel will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Here's what he says, guys. I'm going to just, I'm going to just say it to each and every one of you. He wants us to walk in this full purpose, the glory of God. And he says, here it is. Here it is, Cindy. It's all for you. But if you won't walk in it, you'll die. Surely somebody is coming who will walk in it. It could be you or it could not. Ah, who cares, right? Who cares? Now he's connected this glory with the second Israel. 
The second Israel, remember I told you there's two Israels, one died in the wilderness, and this other one surely is going to be filled with the glory. It's new covenant Israel. Why is that? Look at verse 24. But my spirit, or but my servant Caleb, because he had a du another spirit, a different spirit. Who was the leader of the first group? Moses. What kind of revelation did Moses have of God? Burning bush. Who was the leader of the second Israel? Joshua. What kind of revelation did he have? The Lord of hosts himself appeared. Out of that one revelation of Moses, the burning bush, is birth an Israel. Out of the revelation of the Lord of hosts is birth a second Israel. Do you see this type of shadow? Yeah. Both had provision. Only one had a heart for purpose. The pursuit of purpose. Not for me, but for his purpose. Yes, it relates to me. But let's don't dwarf the thing before it gets started. Now, now here we go. Let me just give you a couple examples. I'm in a hurry. Romans 8. Y'all know how this one goes. Man, everybody knows this one. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. Praise everything's for me, 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 me. <laughs> love it. I love to go to church and have the preacher brush my hair. Tell me oh, what kind of great guy I am, how much God loves me. See, we don't we just stop there, right? I have seen me. No need to read any further. Have y'all ever quoted that verse? Come on, man. Every time something bad happens, that you go to that verse, that you bail out. All things work together for good to them who love God. I know you're going through it. I know you just said your car resist and your house burnt down and, you know, all these other things, but all things work together for good to them who love God. And I really love God, so this has got to work to God and somehow I go look at this mess and say, I don't know what I'm going to do, but i got to turn this thing around and make it work for your good. So I'll figure something out there. I used to think that. I don't know how God's going to do it. Y'all ever think that? I don't know how God's going to do it, but he's going to make this thing work to my good. <laughs> we like a bunch of dummies running around sometimes because we didn't read the verse. We thought it was all about us, so let's keep reading the verse. To them who are the called according to his purpose, which was a before the foundation of the world. This took me right out of the loop. And said, I've got my purpose right here in this all things. I'm just going to give you a little hint here. The all things ain't concerning you. The all things was concerning the old covenant. All things concerning the old covenant are going to point to me yes. according to my purpose. God, we want to jump in there and jump up and say, oh, yeah, and we just grab little verses and people will ask you questions. The Greeks will always ask you a question about that. Me, me, me. And let me just throw this out there at you. We, 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 we jump around, well, we jump around and say, well, I'll come back to that. Uh, look at Romans 9 and, and uh Verse 10, 11, 12, 13. And not only this, not only all these things I've just said, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, I'm talking about two Israels here, guys, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election or choosing, might stand. Not of works, but of him that call it. God Almighty, this verse right here has crippled people, crippled doctrines, crippled religions, because now some ignorant preacher needs to stand up here and tell you why God chose Tim and didn't choose other. I, you know, I look from the foundation of the world and said, I really like Tim a whole lot better. Tim's got a lot more potential. Sorry. You see? <laughs> that up. Because it says neither one. And then we just throw this thing around here like, well, God just, you know, I don't know. God just chose you. 
Remember, I'm talking about two Israels here, according to what? According to purpose. And it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. What do you mean he chose Jacob and, and hated Esau? I thought God was love. This don't bode very well to the school. We don't throw that out there when we talk about gay people, do we? God loves everybody. Right here, he just said, I hated Esau. I just read the to you. God loves everybody and everything, and it doesn't matter. We are so ignorant. God hated it. What does that mean, he hated Esau? He, let me just say it this way. He Jesus, would, or Paul said it this way in Hebrews, that he might take away the first, that he might establish the second. The first was only to point to the second, which is him. All this first that we're talking about was to point to the one. Now all of these fell short. All of these fell short. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I loved. Now listen, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find that. Let's just go back to Ephesians because it's right there. It's right there back in Ephesians and you'll see it. Ephesians. Blessed be the, the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according. So he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy in that and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Having made known unto us, I'm in verse 9, the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself after the counsel. God has something in his heart. Stay with me. I'm going to be finished here in a minute. There, there is, this purpose is in his heart. It's not in the world. It's not in creation. There is a knowing of Christ, a revelation of him. Listen, there is a knowing of Christ that will bring you into the very heart of God. The very heart of God. And in that place, we're not the center let me tell you, our soul was created for purpose. But a purpose is not in doing something. Purpose in the heart of the Father. Listen to this. Purpose in the heart of the Father. Before the foundation of the, per of, of the world, this purpose was his after his good pleasure. Good pleasure of his own will. And this purpose that's in his heart What's the motivating factor behind everything done? God including uh, what God had done, including what he done in Christ. When I say that, because I mean there was all these old types and shadows, the Jacob Esau, the types and shadows. Everything he did was according to this purpose. Now listen, we come up with a new uh, Here's what we say. Well, this purpose, the purpose of God was for us to be in Christ. So what do we do? So we got an in Christ gospel. We're in, listen, we're in Christ with purpose. Purpose was birthed in the heart of God and only realized in the face, in the person of Jesus Christ. So we come up with purpose. What's our purpose? Our purpose is to be the sons of God, right? How many messages have you heard on that? So, and and what, what gets birthed out of that is sonship. This is where I was going to go a minute ago in Romans because it says the creature or the creation was subject to vanity. But we want to look up there and say, well, we, and, and the whole creation is waiting on the manifest of the sons of God. Stay in context. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about old covenant Israel. He's saying that whole creation was subjected under the law, but in hope. Their hope was realized when John said, there's your hope right there. Right there is your hope. They were 
created subject to that. We want to make a doctrine out of that and say, it again, it's all about me. God wants to manifest me. He wants to manifest me. It's all about me. So we produce this. Manifested sons. You know what it is? It's us trying to find our purpose in a thing. When we try to find a purpose in a thing and not in Christ, we get in trouble. I want to bring us to a place where our whole day is filled with purpose. When you get out of bed, your life is filled with purpose. Everything you do is, is, is a purpose. And you will live according to that. It's a realization of Christ in which you live and move and find your being. It will become the why of everything you do. Or say, or think. Listen to this. Ephesians uh, 3, 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and the powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. These things have been hid, guys, but here it is. Verse 11, according. All these things that he just said are in accordance with something. The eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The purpose is only found in the heart of God and only revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Do you understand the significance of this? Of who this Jesus Christ is? And we got lots of names for him, right? He is the way, the truth, the life, the resurrection. I am the bread. I, you know, and the list goes on. Before Abraham was, I am. The list goes on. But what does that mean to you? Is he just a name, just to somebody? Hey, I know Jesus. Yeah, look at him over there, man. He's looking good. Does all these terms get it said? Do they sum it up? Let me tell you what John said. Here's, here's John's description of him. In the beginning, what's the word? The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Do we have any idea of who it is that is revealed in us when Christ is revealed in us, when the Son is revealed. Listen, when the Son is revealed in you, the heart of God is exposed. I, this may sound crazy, guys, but I was thinking of this song by Bruce Springsteen called Secret Garden. Have you guys ever heard that song? And it, it Basically, that song is about a woman's heart. And it'd be in a secret garden. It's a real pretty song. I really like the song. Guys, we put those things way over there, but I want you to understand when the sun is revealed in you, the heart, the secret garden of God is being revealed. The mystery that has been, been hidden has been revealed. The heart of God is exposed. It's exposed to your soul. The face of God is exposed to the face of your soul. Song of Solomon say, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. And I will tell you this, it's totally devastating on one side and it's totally exalted on the other. It's devastating to you, it's exalting to him. In Ephesians 4.3 he says this, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'm going to be finished here in just a minute because i I got I to hit something to you. I know I've kept you here a long time, but I can't stop in the middle of this and leave you hanging. The spirit of your mind. What is the spirit of your mind? The spirit of your mind is the heart. Purpose is found in the heart of God and revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Christ is the personification 
of divine purpose. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, in the spirit of your heart. Christ is the personification of divine purpose. Everything he did, every word he spoke was in accordance with the divine purpose of the Father. Jesus said it like this, and we, and, and we talked about this Monday. Jesus said, The Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He saith the Father do, for what things soever He doeth, the Son doeth likewise. And I, and I, and I told him Wednesday night, I said, so, so here comes Jesus, and here's what Jesus does. He, he looks over and says, Man, open the spine in the back. I don't know if I should do it. Then, Father, what should I do? Father goes, I want you to spit on the ground, make mud, and put it up in his eyes. He says, Okay, how'd you do that? Okay, now. He runs over here, and he puts, spits on the ground, and he does all this. Okay, I, I didn't hear what he wanted. Jesus, or God, what do you want me to say? I want you to tell him, be there. Yeah, okay. Now he runs back over here and says, All right, Oakland, be healed. Do it or see my father do it? Okay, now what are you doing? I'm going to run back and what are you going to do now? Now I want you to lick your fingers and stick them in the guy's ear. Okay, let me run over here and lick your fingers and stick them in the guy's ear. Okay, I did that. Now what are you, oh, wait, now what are you going to do? Okay, I want you to, oh yeah, let's go over here and do this. You see what I'm talking about? And this is the picture that we get. I don't know about you, it's the picture that I get. I could never reconcile these verses. But now, according to this purpose, what he did. And what he said was a manifestation of purpose. He himself in the very being was the manifestation of purpose. He is the purpose of God in manifestation. Everything he did was from that purpose. He said nothing or did anything that was not in accordance with this purpose. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. That wasn't the purpose, the eternal purpose of God. Remember, how do I know that? Because the purpose was before the foundation of the world. It was there first. Nothing violated purpose. His words were out from purpose. He couldn't get carried away with any other purpose. Because when he did, purpose would always triumph. Adam fell from his purpose. And when Satan come to tempt him, he, per he triumphed because he walked where he was the purpose. Something was to carry him away, couldn't do it. Now listen to what he said. And this is why he could say this. I'll just read these verses. This is it, I promise. In 10.22, I'm in John. It was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication. It was winter. Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Man, I want to get into these. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long do you make us doubt? If you be Christ, tell us plainly. Seeing the miracles, seeing everything that he did, walking in purpose, healing the sick, raising the dead, people they knew, their own cousins, their own brother-in-laws and everything, healed, and I knew this guy's been blind his whole life, and now he's healed, and now they throw him out of the temple. Y'all remember that's where the song Amazing Grace come from? They say, like, yeah, we know this guy, but you know, brought him ass, been blind, but, but if you're the Christ, plainly tell us. We want another sign. And another sign, and another sign, and another sign, and another sign, and another sign. But Jesus answered them only because he was in purpose. And he says this, I told you, and you believed me not. I'm going to put on a sign out there that says, Jesus will be here Sunday at 11. I told you, and you believed me not. And if you don't believe me, you will never see him. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me, because I am walking in this purpose. But you believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. They shall never come short of this purpose. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I'm going to leave you with this. Why? Because I and my Father are one. Oh.